Good day fellow investors, this video is about motivation and it will discuss the real story of how me and my wife turned 15,000 euros into 150,000 over less than four years with real estate. I think it's so important because whenever I discuss real hands-on investments, be it real estate, mortgage, stocks or something like that, and when I really believe those are good investments, I get so many comments like, but Sven this, but real estate prices are in a bubble, but real estate prices might go down, but copper prices are down and will go lower, there will be a recession, there will be a stock market crash, etc, etc. And I really want to take this video as a motivation to get rid of your buts, to get up from your butt and to start doing things and to start thinking in a progressive way when it comes to investing. And I'll share seven tips, steps, how you can really take advantage of what's going on in the environment, be it stocks, be it real estate, and really give you the example. The seven steps are the following. The first one, find undervalued, not recognized investments by the market. Be a contrarian, find limited assets that have limited supply, put things into historical perspective, use good debt, create worst and best case scenarios, find the margin of safety. So let's go to the story. A few years ago, this was a house that was sold. It was 294,000 euros and it was a nice house in a little village close to Amsterdam. I was working hard to get a permanent job to be able to buy a mortgage. We were renting and I saw that, okay, if we buy a house like this, the rent will be the mortgage payment after taxes will be equal to the rent we are paying for a small apartment without a garden and with two rooms less than this house. So we decided, okay, let's look for real estate. We looked at a thousand real estates online. We visited about 50 and we picked this house to buy. We first offered 260, that was a little bit low and the seller said, let's meet at halfway. So we bought it for 280,000 on credit, on mortgage. We added 5,000 of our own money and we got a 303,000 mortgage that allowed us to do refurbishment. So we bought a house for 303,000. It was a terrible looking house. It was a healthy house. That's why we bought it, but it was a cheap house. It was a crowded house. It was a dirty house. It was not a well-maintained house because the seller was forced to sell because of a divorce, unfortunately. And he, he, he was very keen on that house. So he didn't want to sell. As, as you can see, it doesn't look at all attractive, but the walls were healthy. So we said, okay, we're going to buy this and we're going to turn it into something we like. Four years later, we really worked hard on that and we sold it for 469,000. I think the selling price was about 442. So we made after some mortgage repayments, about 150,000 euros on 15,000 investments. Look at what we did. We simply refurbished the complete house, put new floors, wooden floors, painted the whole house. It looks really differently than it looked before. Put in a new kitchen. I'm not even going to show you what the kitchen looked like uh, back then. This is the office, my office where I worked a lot. Also on these videos, and uh, while we were living there, we refurbished the rooms, also wooden flooring, upstairs, uh, in the attic also. I redid the garden. It was, some people go to the gym and pay a monthly subscription, or you can take your own garden and fix it. And trust me, it works better than the gym. So let's start on the points. One, it was undervalued. Why it was undervalued? I went, I paid for Catastrophe catastral data to get all the prices of all the homes sold in the last five years in the area. And I saw that a house 20 meters from this house, equal house, was just sold when I was buying that one for 440,000 just because it was refurbished. And then I said, okay, it looks like there are no prices below what we are paying. So we are paying a bargain bottom price. And the upside is 
very very high just from refurbishing because in the Netherlands especially in that area people don't like refurbishing they want to get in their slippers into their new house it has to be perfect that is worth 50,000 100,000 euros so that was one we were looking at the whole market and buying a bargain so we made money I think 50% of what we made came from the refurbishing 50% because home prices went up over the last four years so that's one number two be a contrarian so this is the Dutch home price market you see how home prices in the long run go up but there are always these booms and busts and these busts can be very terrible so when we were buying a house there everybody was saying Sven don't buy don't buy prices prices might go lower you might be in trouble underwater blah 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 but we decided not to look or bet on prices going higher or lower and many of you are waiting for lower prices or higher prices we just looked how the rent for the similar home would be 1800 back then now probably above 2000 mortgage costs after tax was 1100 so we had a margin of safety there we could always rent out the house and simply after 25 years to have a house probably home prices in the Netherlands given what the ECB is doing will continue to go up up and up with a fixed mortgage you know what the deal is there so win-win situation number three limited supply this is the area we were buying into so you see Amsterdam and then you see this green area which is one of the richest areas of the Netherlands the soil is not fertile so you don't have agriculture but you have trees you have woods and you have a lot of villas and we liked the green area and then we said okay let's buy here plus this is the area of what is sold the map from the Dutch Zillow let's say or right move and you see here okay these are all the houses but if I put less than half a million there is just a few houses and there is one house next to our then that was just sold so you see that there wasn't a lot of supply for those with less than half a million and the reason still now that wanted to live exactly in that area so we bought in a luxurious area there is no new building and there will never will be new buildings in that village because that's how things are that's limited natural area and you know how that goes then again putting things into historical perspective before it was being a contrarian because nobody wants to buy but long term home prices go up there might be ups and downs as I said and the central bank is cutting its deposit rate lowering interest rates helping those that are in debt like the Fed and that's it number five use good debt I made a video about a fixed mortgage so check that out whatever happens you will do great there will be inflation somewhere over the next 30 years that's guaranteed and after 30 years you have a great asset because it's a limited asset then number six create worst and best case scenarios what was my worst case scenario worst case scenario was okay home prices go down for a few years but my seeing was okay either we will live there or we will rent it out and the rent will cover the mortgage over 30 years it's very likely home prices will go up because the whole system in Europe if home prices go down especially in the Netherlands blows up because if you get 100% mortgages and home prices go down it simply blows up so they need those home prices to go up 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 and up and that's what they will continue to do and then also when it comes to that you are buying an asset an asset that we, is like a business where you okay okay what's my yield from that asset if you're happy with the yield at that moment in time you don't care more about whether the asset price goes up or down you're an investor not a speculator you care only about the yield the rent value of that home compared to your mortgage that's what you care and that is something that doesn't move that much fixed mortgage rent can go a little bit up or down but those are more stable than asset prices so as an investor you focus on the business not on the speculative part when the speculative part explodes that's the best case scenario as it happened for us so 
when that happens, okay, you take your money and you see to deploy it. Otherwise, other things, even if I still think it is a great investment, if I would have kept my equity in of 150,000 in 20, 30 years, it will be a million mortgage paid out from renters as I move to another country. So that would be a nice four bagger over 30 years. We took their money out because I think we can do better on the next real estate project, which will also be a hands-on project where we take advantage of bargains, etc., etc. Same story as we are doing here. We have something, we're looking at something, but I'll uh, share more when we actually buy something, hopefully over the next six months, one year. So don't forget to subscribe. Number seven, number seven, margin of safety. For me, it was the rent versus the mortgage, the fixed mortgage protection for inflation, house prices going up really limited area close to Amsterdam, 20 minutes, 22 minutes by car. So really, really something good. John de Mol, one of the richest Dutch people, uh, was living uh, 800 meters from me. One of the best schools in the whole area of the Netherlands was 200 meters from there and you automatically get your kids into it if you live there. So a lot of positives, but nobody was looking there because you could buy somewhere else, less luxury area, something for the same house for 100, 120 lower. So for living, it was still luxury four years ago. It's still now, but it was a bargain in my perspective. And to conclude, if you use such seven steps, you look for win, 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 win situations. And that's also the message of this channel. We are training our minds by looking at stocks, by looking at uh, real estate, by looking at investment opportunities to take advantage when the opportunity comes. If you take advantage of such opportunities twice in a decade, over 50 years, you're a multi, multi millionaire. And that's how things are done. Be it stocks, be it real estate, be it other smart investments from businesses, but you have to have a patient mind a long-term mindset, an investing mindset, and take advantage of those things. So thank you for watching. This is real estate. I don't talk much about it because it's hands-on. It's a lot of work and YouTube doesn't like it. It seems that on YouTube, people love, okay, give me a stock to buy so that I can make money tomorrow. Okay, that works on YouTube, but I still continue to share my real estate story here and there. It's long-term, it's boring. It's patient, it's waiting, it's looking, it's hard work, but at the end, step by step, it goes, it pushes you forward. Check my stock market research platform for, from, for the stock market part of what I do, the portfolios, the research, similar to these principles, always looking for low risk, high upside, even if we don't know when that upside happens. We can say it high uncertainty, like Monish Pabrai likes to say. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next video.